about Shakespeare's immortal words, the sceptered isle, this jewel set in the silver sea. From the air we see looming up the most blessed sight to any Englishman. As weary of foreign climes, he turns his eyes to home, the white cliffs of the motherland. And nestling softly in their bosom, the ancient port of Dover, the gateway to England. Let us enter its historic castle. Now, don't come in here. What's that? Castle's a place where people used to live. If you're making a film, show them places where people live now. Dover's not just a gateway, it's a town. For 40,000 of us, it's home. So go and have a look at the town. The castle can wait. Say, what's biting him? What's this? Aha, I remember. The famous white cliffs are honeycombed with caves, a positive rabbit warren. Don't call us over people rabbits, mate. Nine days of us lived here during the war. Go down to the town. See where we're living now. I'm getting nowhere fast. Let's take a look at that. Well, Captain Webb, the first man ever to swim the English Channel. To oh. No. I just live out here. And you want me to look at the town? Uh-huh. Listen, you're the third one who's horned in on my travelogue. We say goodbye. The film's over. Now don't do that yet. There's a lot you haven't seen. 2,260 shells made Dover look like this. What's that? In 1909, Blario flew across the channel. That's irrelevant. This is important. Not to me. Oh, yes, it is. But... Oh, even the camera's gone back on me. Okay, it's all yours. Thank you. Shall we shake on that? Right. As I was saying, 2,260 shells, each a ton in weight, fell on Dover during the six years of the war. That shelling, to say nothing of the bombs, earned us the title of Hellfire Corner. No sooner were buildings repaired than they were smashed. Repaired and smashed again. Some were damaged as many as 27 times. September 1944, the shelling stopped and people started to come back. Soon, there were over 2,000 families looking for homes. Every possible house had to be repaired for them. So, okay, okay, I'll take over now. This is Dover's Market Square today. Dover. Bombed, shelled, and blasted. After six years of ruthless warfare, many thousands are still homeless. There hey, is... stop, stop. There aren't many thousands still homeless. Dover's been busy. I don't see it. You will. This is where we meet the borough engineer. We had so much repairing to do that we just weren't able to begin our new housing until June 1945. But you've been putting them up since? Well, I think you can say we've made a start. But where? Where I've been is still a shambles. I haven't even cleared the old stuff out of the way yet. I'm afraid I've been showing him the damage. Well, the center of the town is badly knocked about. 250 acres, in fact, that could be classed as an area of extensive war damage. I know that if you walk along the sea front, it doesn't look as if we've got down to it yet. But that's deliberate. Deliberate? Yes, this destruction gives Dover a great opportunity. This old Regency property, for example, just is beyond patching up. It doesn't look that bad. Some of it is still standing, yes. But shell fire has a very different effect from bombing. And it is nearly all structurally unsound. We hope to pull it down. Then again, along the foot of the cliffs, there's a great deal of undignified building. There's a chance to get rid of that. The old Dover was like many forts. Houses, shops, industry and slums, all rather higgledy-piggledy. Now a lot of that has gone. And you're going to finish off what Hitler started. Well, at least we're going to put up something worthwhile in its place. After consulting Sir Patrick Abercrombie and Richard Nixon, Dover has prepared a plan. Briefly, it provides the main road down each side of the valley to carry heavy traffic to and from the harbor. Seafront buildings will be moved back to make room for public gardens. This area will be residential blocks of flats, hotels, and so on. This will be the business zone. Industry will be concentrated here, and the rest which will restore as it was, but with improved
prove their sensation. That's why the theater is still as you saw it. That sounds fine, but it's going to take a long time. Twenty years. Twenty years? But what about the homeless people? They can't wait that long. Excuse me a moment. Remember, June 1945 was our starting date. Old Pike Hill Corner, 45 traditional type houses. Bunkers Hill, 26 permanent houses. Work started on May 2nd, 1946. Only 14 of these are occupied yet, but the rest are nearly finished. Park Hill, progress on all houses well advanced. St. Radigan, 28 houses all completed and occupied. Down end, site prepared for 68 traditional houses and building starts. Sometimes we have to wait quite a time for materials and fitting. 50 factory built permanent houses, 36 completed. War damage rebuilding, 21 houses completed, 59 in progress. Much of this repair work is being done by the mobile labor force and by Belgians who volunteered to come over and help us rebuild our town. Without them, we shouldn't have been able to get nearly so many people settled into comfortable homes. That's fair enough. But back home in the States, we used prefabricated houses. We've moved faster. Afraid I'm due to meet the mayor. Why don't you just come along? <laughs> this our American colony. 144 houses were sent from the United States, so we arranged them all together. These are aluminium houses made in British aircraft factories. 256 of them. Pretty hard work building up here. Look at those roads. We've laid over three miles of road, actually, and five and a half miles of sewers. Five and a half miles? Then there's water, electricity, and all the rest of it. It looks to me as if you've had a pretty tough job. In fact, isn't it all a bit too much for temporary houses? Well, we intend to make a permanent estate here later. We bought 198 acres and our architect has provided for 900 houses, a community center, churches, playing fields, and a tavern or two. Very soon we will begin on the shops. And when you come to build this permanent estate, the roads, the sewers, and so on will be here waiting. Ooh, I get it. To say nothing of the view, of course, that's permanent anyhow. We appreciate it. Oh, good afternoon.
afternoon, ma'am. Our friend here came to Dover looking for castles. Yeah, and what do I find? Prefabs. Wonderful to have a place of your own. Our own? May I introduce my wife? Our home. Well, <laughs> you know, I, I figure <laughs> an Englishman's prefabs can be his castle, too. <laughs> 